Hey guys, welcome to another one take video. I actually have another video planned for today, which will come out later. Well, specifically later today, but I decided to make this video as a quick response to Rachel Oates and to educate her subscribers about feminism. Now, ignorant feminists like Rachel Oates defame MGTOW men and pretend that they're the problem while actually ignoring real issues, as this video will demonstrate later on. Also, this video showcases some of the indefensible hypocrisies of the feminist movement. Now, with that in mind, please do not harass Rachel or anyone else who shares her viewpoint. Their ignorance is not their fault. They were indoctrinated as young children into the feminist lies they cling to today. Further, most of the men who follow Rachel Oates and YouTubers like her, they're thirsty, so really they can't be reasoned with. In order to be popular on YouTube as a female, you only have to be two things. The first one is you have to be attractive. Now, you don't have to be beautiful, but you have to be attractive. And Rachel Oates is attractive. The second thing you need to do is you need to pretend you're not a feminist, which Rachel, Rachel Oates does in this video right here. She actually takes Victoria's Secret side against feminism when it comes to this particular issue. Now, as a result, Rachel has 79,000 subscribers. Now, before we continue, though, it's important to really understand where Rachel's coming from and to learn a little bit about her so we know exactly how much credibility to give her and we can kind of take her message in the proper context. Now, first, Rachel has a history of mental health problems, which she goes into a little bit in this video. She actually admits that she's got a history here. Secondly, she really doesn't have very many friends. And third, and I think this is most important, um, she admits that she creates mediocre YouTube videos. I, I think that should tell us a little bit about Rachel and kind of how much credibility we should give her. So let's jump right in. What really started this was this particular video here. And this video by Rachel um, is, you know, MGTOW dehumanizing women. All right. Let's kind of touch base a little bit on this. I'm going to go ahead and give you about 90 seconds of this video, maybe, um, maybe two minutes of this video. And we're going to kind of talk a little bit about it and kind of talk about some of the allegations that she makes in the video. Here we go. Hey, everyone. Um, today, we are going to be making a video. No, I'm going to be making a video. You guys aren't making the video. You're just watching. There's those mental health problems. Again, don't make fun of her for it. She can't help herself. Here we go. In the video. Today, I'm going to be talking about something that I think might make a few people angry if my incels video is anything to go by. I made the mistake of looking at the MGTOW tag on Tumblr, which is like men going their own way. It's like anti-feminism, but to the extreme, because this is like men who think, you know, they, they don't need women and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, we're not sexist, but stuff like that. It was a very weird tag to look at because not only was there lots of this like anti-women stuff. There are also a lot of posts by incels, and there are also a lot of posts by feminists and also radical feminists who hate men. So it was All right. So let's go ahead and stop there. I just uh I wanted to kind of save you guys from the uh ear assault. But let's talk about this for a second, okay? Now, her first mistake, and I think it's a fatal mistake, was that she actually searched for MGTOW on Tumblr and nowhere else. Okay. Now, this is important because I don't know and I've never heard of a single MGTOW content creator or educator who has used Tumblr as their primary platform to distribute their material. They use YouTube. They've used yet Reddit. They go to MGTOW.com and other forums. They don't use Tumblr. You know who uses Tumblr? She says it right there. Radical feminists and women. It's like she's having an eyes wide shut moment where and no pun intended as we look at the screen, but she wants to talk about MGTOW and she wants to pretend she has a credible source. So she goes to the place almost least as least likely to find actually legitimate MGTOW content as digging into a garbage can. And then this whole video, and you can watch it to see for yourself, basically she just hashtag me too's all these feminist opinions that are there. And this is important because when I said that she pretends that she's not a feminist, if you look at the bottom of the video, she admits um, these MGTOW incel, WIGTOW, RADFEM posts on Tumblr to remind me why we need feminism. 
Okay, so she's a rad femme. She agrees with the radical feminists. She agrees with the hashtag kill all men crowd. Okay, now this video, when you actually go into more detail and you watch the whole thing, um, she talks a lot about promiscuity and she defends it. it. Like she doesn't understand and she doesn't understand the consequences of promiscuity either. She actually thinks that there's it's like a victimless crime. She doesn't understand the long term consequences for the women who are promiscuous or the consequences for the people around them. And she rambles about this. I mean, like she actually returns to this a few different times. Now, the other thing that she does is she doesn't post links to her sources. Now, she talks about how she touched on a like a MGTOW blog and she found this unnamed MGTOW blog. She talks about it. She reads part of the posts that are there that look like she typed them up in Word herself and posted them up. She doesn't post a link to that blog at all. If you look down here, OK, there's no link to the blog. OK, there's all the uh, all the thirsty guys who follow her but no link to the MGTOW blog, just all of her links that she uses herself. So that said, let's talk a little bit about promiscuity and the consequences of it, all right? And let's start by using the CDC as a source. And again, all these links will be in the description below. First and foremost, uh, women who have more non-marital sex partners are more likely to be infected with sexually transmitted diseases, okay? Again, this is from the CDC. And if you look at the chart on the left, you'll see that Zero sexual partners are less likely to get an STD, and 21 or more sexual partners, the woman is likely to get an STD by almost 42%. That's pretty goddamn high. Now, with that said, uh, women on the right, women who have more non-marital sexual partners are less likely to have stable marriages. So again, the higher the woman's notch count, the lower marital satisfaction is, and the more likely this woman will be divorced. Okay, now second or thirdly, I should say, uh, women who have more non-marital sexual partners are less likely to be happy. Again, there you go, from zero to 21 plus. And finally, uh, women who have more non-marital sexual partners are more likely to be depressed. Now, I think that's kind of important, especially if, you know, you're a depressed YouTuber and you're female and you're defending promiscuity. Um, not saying that Rachel Oates is promiscuous. Just saying that that's something that you should be thinking about, Rachel. That's all I'm saying. Now, you know what else promiscuity leads to? It leads to false allegations of sexual assault. You see, the more promiscuous a woman is, the more likely she'll falsely accuse a man of sexual abuse. Now, I include a peer-reviewed study covering this in my book, The Feminist Lie, where it shows that one of the top three reasons a woman will falsely accuse a man of sexual assault is because she doesn't want to get caught cheating on him. Now, why is this important? Well, Rachel lives in the UK, so let's talk about some fast facts there and we'll move on, okay? Meet Alison Saunders. Now, Alison Saunders is the former director of public prosecutions. This British feminist bigot used her office to witch hunt men by the hundreds every year she was in power until she got caught. Now, because she got caught and everybody was terrified, the Crown Prosecution Service had to review all of her cases. And, and let me kind of touch on this. This is from The Guardian. Um, the Crown Prosecution Service is to review all current rape cases to ensure that the evidence which needs to be disclosed has been handed over to defendants. The emergency re-examination, which comes after the collapse of several rape trials, is likely to result in some prosecutions being discontinued, according to the joint statement from the CPS, the National Police Chiefs Council, and the College of Policing. Now, with that in mind, Alison Saunders was eventually forced to resign from her office. And they talk about this in the Daily Mail article that, that's here. And the important takeaway, by the way, this is a huge article and this was buried in the center. So bear that in mind. Um, in January, the BBC reported that the number of prosecutions in England and Wales had collapsed due to a failure by police or prosecutors to disclose evidence that had jumped 70 percent from 537 in 2014 and 2015 to 917 in 2016 and 2017. Now, I want you to bear that in mind. You remember how all these women say false rape allegations are rare and, and most guys are making this up? All right. They actually had to dismiss the cases because the police and prosecution knew that over 500 allegations were false 
and that jumped 70%, almost 100%, to 917. Now, I don't know what the other years were, but those numbers are huge, especially for a country the size of the UK. It also says, last month, Mrs. Saunders faced, facing criticism after a father was acquitted of female genital mutilation charges. The third time prosecutors have brought an FGM case to trial, but failed to secure a conviction. So not only are these men being falsely accused of crimes, they're being recharged when the court throws them out. That's how desperate this witch hunter is. It shows that men are being persecuted in the United Kingdom. And, and frankly, Rachel, if you actually paid attention to the news in your own country, you would know this. It's cases like this that cause men to go MGTOW. They cause men to stay away from women. They cause them to stay away from marriage. They don't want to be with a promiscuous woman because they know that she is more likely to cheat. They don't want to be with a promiscuous woman because they don't want to deal with her mental health problems. And they don't want to be with a promiscuous woman because she is more likely to abandon the marriage. Now, in addition to all these false allegations, here's the thing that's really sad. And this, this is, it, it's, it's a complete systemic tragedy, all right? The British police are ignoring migrant rape gangs. And this isn't the only rape gang. This is from Forbes, okay? But 1,400 children were sexually assaulted, okay? Just in, in uh, Rotherham alone. And probably thousands of children across the country, in addition to all the migrant rapes that are happening in the country. And yet, not only are the police ignoring it, so are feminists. Feminists haven't said anything about this. In fact, Alison Saunders is a feminist, and some of this happened on her watch. In addition to that, there are more than 900 no-go zones in the United Kingdom. OK, with more than 1400 addresses where ambulances won't go without police protection. Now, let's talk a little bit about this, because this one is far more troubling because nobody's really reporting about this. I mean, this is from The Sun, of course. They reported about it, but you don't really hear a lot about this. This was from November 2018, yet very few people are talking about it, which is why I think it's important to bring it to everybody's attention here. So with that in mind, let's kind of take a look at this. OK, it says around eight paramedics are subjected to a serious attack every day as they try to carry out their work saving the public. Some have been stabbed, throttled and even sexually assaulted in their line of work. More than twenty eight hundred staff were attacked on duty last year, a rise from over two thousand in years 2013 and 2014. That's insane. These people are paramedics. They're trying to help save lives and they are being uh, stabbed and sexually assaulted and raped. That is insane. Let's go on. Okay. And they show some of the pictures of the damage. You can see there's people here. You know, this guy is trying to treat a patient. Somebody else is attacking him from the outside. Here's some damage to their vehicles. So like their stuff's had, had stuff thrown against it. Um, let's kind of scroll down a little more. It says, uh, in London, injuries sustained by staff included asphyxiation, spinal cord damage, burns, dislocations, fractures, and concussion. A shocking 69 ambulance workers reported being sexually assaulted in 2017 in Yorkshire alone. Okay, that is crazy. And again, what are feminists doing about this? What are feminists, what, what's the feminist position about this? Oh yeah, they're quiet. Well, well, let me ask you this. What, what are feminists doing instead? What is the big push? What are, what are the police doing about this? This is epidemic levels of crime. Hate speech arrests are up by 900%. And this is last year. This is 2017. That's not even this year. I bet you it's up even higher this year. Let's kind of touch on this a little bit. A staggering rise in online hate crime as people are attacked over Twitter, Facebook, and other social media sites has led to a gigantic leap in arrests in Britain. British police are arresting nine people a day for attacks on the internet as they attempt to clamp down on hate speech online. Attacks. Attacks. Mean words are now attacks. Whatever happened to sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. All right. In some areas, this is up almost 900 percent from 2014. And the number of people detained for alleged attacks. Remember, mean words over the internet has rocketed in two years as social media allows users to verbally attack others. Yeah, that's that's what's happening. Yeah, to tell that, tell that to YouTube, okay? 
You can't even have a disagreement on YouTube without your video being demonetized, put in a limited state, or being outright banned. The same thing is true with Facebook and Twitter. But let's move on. In 2014, there were 2,315 arrests compared with 2,755 in 2015. This means that there has been a rise of almost 50% between 2014 and 2016. Last year, 1,696 people were charged and 1,399 convicted, despite almost 4,000 arrests. I want you guys to think about that for a second, okay? Somebody disagrees with somebody online. They have an argument over it. The police come to your house and arrest you. That happened 4,000 times in the UK, okay? It's a waste of time, all right? That happened 4,000 times. But you know what? Child abuse needs to be fine, especially if the person abusing these children is from another country. If they're a migrant and you go to the UK, apparently that is license to sexually assault people. That is license to create no-go zones. That is license to do these things. But again, if you just commit the crime of disagreeing with someone on the internet, you need to be careful because you're going to get arrested for hate speech. All right? But here's the thing. And, and this is this is a problem. You know, Rachel, if one of these migrants was to sexually assault you or any other woman in the United Kingdom... The sad part about this is, and, and this is this should be disturbing, this should actually be frightening. I think that's one of the words you use in your videos, frightening. But if one of these people was to sexually assault you or someone you knew, odds are they're not going to receive any punishment for their crime. A Muslim who raped a 13-year-old girl he groomed on Facebook has been spared a prison sentence after a judge heard he went to an Islamic faith school where he was taught women are worthless. Adil Rashid, 18, claimed he was not aware that it was illegal for him to have sex with the girl because of his education left him ignorant of British law. Yesterday, Judge Michael Stokes handed Rashid a suspended sentence saying, although chronologically 18, it is quite clear from the reports that you are very naive and immature when it comes to sexual matters. Okay, so if you're not from the UK and you rape somebody or you sexually assault somebody, you're naive. But if you're not and you're innocent, you're going to be witch hunted by this feminist and other feminists like her. So tell me, Rachel, your country is controlled by feminist ideology. And if feminism was the answer, why do British feminists refuse to protest epidemic levels of sexual assault committed by migrants every day in your own country? Because, Rachel, thanks to your country's feminist policies, the next migrant rape or murder victim... It could be you. I, I really don't want to end this video on a serious note. I kind of want to have a bit of a giggle. I know we kind of went to a dark place. I really don't want to do that. But Rachel, I want you to understand that I care. And because I care, I'm going to leave you with a video tailored for a feminist YouTuber just like you. Here we go. Hey everyone, my name is Rachel and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a thoroughly inspiring feminist video. Step one is to adopt a thoroughly condescending tone. And don't forget your glasses and winged eyeliner to make sure you look smart, but remind people that you're not like the other girls. You don't want to be associated with them. Step two is to wear something super revealing because it's your body and you're in control of it. But don't forget to get super offended if anyone dares to look at, compliment, or criticize you. Step three, grow out your armpit hair so it looks like you have small animals burrowing on your body. You can't be a real feminist if you care about your looks or hygiene. Step four, only wear makeup if it's applied badly or is unflattering. Those beauty gurus just can't be taken seriously on any issues. Everyone knows your ability to apply makeup is inversely proportional to your intellect. Step five, don't forget to talk about minorities so all the intersectional feminists can relate. If you're unlucky enough to have been white, like me, try and throw in some facts about how you're actually 1 16th Asian or a 10th Spanish because white people are just so oppressive and you don't want to be associated with them. Step six, don't forget, the whole point of this video is to talk about the horrors of patriarchy. So whatever you're fighting, don't forget, blame it on men. For step seven, we don't want men watching this video because they're just new oppressors, right? So do everything in your power to make them feel uncomfortable. 
talk about your period, make it rain pads, and don't forget to say vagina a lot. And if they think you're being weird, uh, no, that's just the patriarchy oppressing you again. So there you go, girls. Now you can go out and make a super inspirational feminist video. And don't forget to mention your Patreon at the end, because how else will you earn money when you're an agender, liberal, polyamorous, intersectional feminist, social justice warrior, and freelance journalist and blogger who still lives with her parents? I'm DDJ, and this has been your dose of misandry today.